We're at the National Right to Life Convention, and I am here with the amazing Stephen Mosher, um, one of one of the premier speakers here. And you have the website pop.org. We don't want to forget that. You are the expert on this whole population question, and I wanted to talk to you first of all about my kids, your kids, everybody's kids out there right now in the school system hearing. We have an overpopulation problem. What is your response to that? Well, my response to that is to say overpopulation is a myth. Now, I know that it's in the air that we breathe. I know it's been in American school textbooks since the 1960s and 70s, since the era of the population bomb. But it, in fact, is not true. What is true is that we've had a great victory over death, not just in the Western world, but in the world at large. And people are living longer and better lives than ever before. And naturally, if we're living longer lives, there are going to be more of us around at any given time. That's something we should celebrate, not something we should despair over. It's not something we should disparage as overpopulation. It's a great victory over death. Let me tell you what I mean. After World War II, the average lifespan worldwide was a little short of 40 years of age. People died on average human beings at, at 38, okay? That recently. Right now, yes, at, at, right now, o over 50 years later, the average lifespan on the planet is almost 70. That means we have almost doubled the average lifespan of human beings on the planet. How have we gone about doing that? We've gone about doing that by providing clean drinking water, modern sanitation facilities, better nutrition, uh, people are eating more and better food than ever before. We brought about uh, this change by using antibiotics, by finding cures for common diseases. Again, this is allowing a lot of babies who would have died in their infancy to live, a lot of children who would have died at the age of three or four from amoebic dysentery, for example, to live, uh, a lot of uh, teenagers and adults who would have died of malaria to live, or cholera, or yellow fever, or any one of the tropical diseases that are epidemic in many parts of the world. We have almost doubled human lifespans by reducing the death rate, much, much lower than it was before World War II. Why aren't we all jumping up and down and shouting for joy that people are living where before they were dying, that babies are living where before they were dying? Well, the liberals are saying there's no food. Well, so bef be be but before we, even before we get to the food question, if death rates were falling, then what happened to birth rates? Well, um, birth rates began falling as well. Right. It's called the demographic transition. What happens in country after country is when parents see that death rates are falling and that more of their children are surviving to adulthood, they automatically adjust their fertility downward. They stop desiring five or six or seven children because they know that most of those children are going to survive to adulthood. Mm -hmm. And so they limit their fertility naturally to two or three children. And statistics have proven. This is the demographic transition. Dozens of countries have gone through the same demographic transition. Right. This is what the whole world is going through now. We did have a one-time increase doubling in world population from 1960 to 2000. The world's population went from 3 billion to 6 billion. Right. Why? Because death rates had fallen so far and so fast that birth rates were still relatively high and people were living longer. But that's a one-time increase. It will never happen again. The world's population will never double again. Because countries were going through the demographic transition, we did have this doubling of the world's population in 40 years. Part of it's because of increasing lifespan. Again, if there are more right. people living longer, there are going to be more of us around at any given time. Which could be soon changing since uh, Obama's taken over, but we'll go ahead. Well, <laughs> that's yeah. another story. So, so, that's, so at the beginning of this one-time doubling of the world's population, the population, uh, overpopulation guys started jumping up and down and saying, look, we're overpopulated. Look, we're having too many children. We need population control programs to reduce, reduce the birth rate. No, we don't. We just need to let the demographic transition run to its completion and let parents decide for themselves how many children they will have and the numbers will go down quickly. Is, is it really true that the population of the entire world would fit into the state of Texas. 
Okay, well, let's start with Texas. I, I like the state of Texas, and yeah. I'm not suggesting that everybody move to Texas. But I am saying that if you do the math, if you crunch the numbers, you can fit everybody, 6.3 billion people in the world today, into the state of Texas. You give them all a single family home with a front and backyard. That is never talked about. All right? And it's the rest amazing. of the world would be empty. We it could convert the rest of the world into a game preserve. It ought to make the environmentalists happy to think that we could do that. that that's just a way of illustrating. Uh, the fact that the world is still largely a very empty place right. and that there's plenty of room on God's green earth for all of us, red and yellow, black and white, and uh, that, that again, we are concentrated you know, in, in cities by choice. Why do, we have, why do we have large cities like New York with 7 million people or Shanghai with over 10 million people? We have large cities because people voluntarily choose to live with lots of other people because there are more job opportunities, better educational opportunities, right. more entertainment and cultural opportunities, better chances for, uh, for high wage jobs for themselves and their children, uh, better roads, uh, better health care. There are all kinds of advantages to living in close proximity with other people. By choice. By choice. Nobody sense. forces people to live in places like Hong Kong which is one of the most crowded cities in the world. You've got 50,000 people per square mile. They're there because they would much rather be in Hong Kong with its first world living standards yes. than in rural China with its third world living standards. So the most populated places on the planet, which we call cities, are places that people voluntarily flock to because there are higher living standards there. What does that tell you about overpopulation? It tells you it's a myth. 